When I was young, living in the hood, always up. Peace. To nothing. My name is Kagan, and I'm here at the 8th Ankh with Sister Rosmariah V. Bay, and she is going to be teaching a class on interpreting your natal chart. Star now. Well, you were a star always. All of us are stars, actually. Uh, we just don't know what kind of star it is that we are. I'd like to start the class with the usual references of, you know, how people get to know what they know and what did they read and credentials, as we say. Of course, there's a list of uh, books that I've read, but more importantly to me, my references become, as I recall, my grandmother, who used to say things to me like, watch the sap in the trees in the winter it goes down below the ground, and then in the spring it rises back again. And she said, that's how people are. If something is inside of them, they're sure going to come out in the spring, child, just as grandmothers would say. And then I remember my great uncle, her brother, who was a planter. And he was sort of sought, tracked down by a local newspaper to do an article called Planting by the Sun. Where, I'm sorry, Planting by the Moon, Phases of the Moon. Wherein he described how to plant when to plant, what not to plant, and what would happen in detail if you plant it on the wrong phase of the moon to your crop. And then, of course, I remember the 70s when I first became interested in astrology. Everybody was going around saying, what's your sign? You know, everybody was identifying with astrology at that time. Unfortunately, it became like a fad, and faded out, commercialized. You could go and find articles, columns with about astrology then and now, but it's all commercialized. And then, of course, I realized that the reason that it's faded out, and this is very important before even getting into any natal aspects or understandings of signs and planets, is because it was a civilization, and it is a civilization and culture that belonged to us and our ancestors. So it had to be faded out and commercialized because anything that se seems as if we might be getting involved in and getting back in touch with nature, sometimes people feel that, well, we can make a dollar off of it, and that's what has happened. So it became faded out. You'll find, if you look in encyclopedias, definitions of astrology that describe theologians, which are men of theory, who say that they arrested and banned astrology. And what they actually were doing was killing a civilization and a culture. If you look at the word cult or occult, what is that? Add chur, add chur to the end of cult and you have culture. Or it is of a cult. So it's of a culture. And that is what has happened to astrology. It has been destroyed. I recall the times when my mother used to say, do not worry about the things you have no control over. And that was a very hard lesson for me because she would say that everything has its own control. It has a rhyme, it has a reason, it has a season. I think that my grandmother and my, my, my family was actually imparting to me and sharing with me their application of the laws of nature. Because that's how they live. This is just no question. That's the way it was always done. And what has happened now with us being faded away from it, or not, and I think sometimes the reason why we're away from it is that we, one, we don't identify with it at all because it's, it, it seems to be identified in a commercialized way. Two, it seems complicated to identify with. And that's what I want to do today is just kind of break it down so that it is not complicated. What you do with it after that in terms of your study, that's for you. But it will change, it should, it ought to change, certainly change the way you see yourself and change the way you see 
astrology. It'll get rid of, without doubt, the God concept, which most of us have already, we know something's wrong there. And that's another reason why it has been arrested and banned, because it would, without doubt, get rid of the God concept. No question. So, I'm not going to read everything that's in my reference. That's for you to do. But um, I would like to say this. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can read the list of books, but to me, my closest reference are my family. And if we can get back to that, where I don't have to stand here telling you or giving you credentials about something that we all used to know, and not only know, but applied. That's where it has to come to. And it will get there. When we were born, we were born under the stars and the moons and, and, and the planets. They were watching us when we were born. But yet, we think that it doesn't, they, that they don't affect us. That's not even, that doesn't even fall with common thinking. Of course it affects it. If the, if the sun is strong enough to spark life in the earth and the moon is strong enough to pull the tides of oceans, then who are we to think that it has no effect on us, has a great effect on us? But again, by knowing what these effects are would put us in a place where we certainly we, we would, if there's no middleman, we would direct, direct to ourselves. And God said, as they say, God said, I've given you everything that you need. It's inside of you. You've read, if you've read a book of Thomas, which is the one I've read in it, and it's also in the scripture, the Biblios Helotech. I've given you everything that it's already in you. If you should search for the kingdom of heaven and you think it is up there, then the birds will get there first. If you think it's below, then the fish are going to beat you to it. It's inside already. So if it's inside, why are we looking for anything or anyone to come and salvage or save us? It just doesn't work. It's inside yourself. So, how do you get to that? Definitely, definitely. Zodiac is a represent representation of the laws of nature. In spite of man's failure to recognize this fact, and I tell you, I have to ask you a question. Do you think that man transforms back into this earth again and again? Or do you think you're just here once and you're going to go and that's it? Hmm? Yeah, I'm asking. I believe that man comes back. Man comes back. Again and again. Again and again. Until he corrects whatever has to be corrected. Right. Which could be infinite, right? Yes. Yes. It could be. Definitely. Could be. Definitely, right? Indefinite. So anyone who doesn't know that, I would say to them, looking to the eyes of a baby, or their baby, or any baby, what, who do you see? <laughs> you know, that's how you would go with that. Well, when we're done with this, this class, one thing I, I'm sure it's going to do is explain to you some of the things that you do, some of the things that you don't do, and why you do them or don't do them. Yes, you are different. Everybody is a star, as I said, but not the kind of star that's on television, you know, pretending like, looking like I'm making love, but not making love, but I'm nude, you know, and, but I'm a star. <laughs> not that star. Okay. Um, the... Being different doesn't make you strange, but it also doesn't make you any better than the next person. It just makes you more of you, uniquely you. Most importantly, all of the explanations that we're going to give and all of the variations that we're going to give do not come from a crystal ball. It comes from natural law. Now, we talked about, we, we talked about uh, what the media wants you to see and how they want you not to look at, at the, the astrology. Uh, I gotta say before we get into um, the progression of the sun, as I said, the spring is when things come out. If you will notice, it's around the spring. And this is, someone brought this to my attention just recently, that major laws are made, you know, like right now. They have a law where they are going to allow people networks to buy all of the networks. Has anybody heard about that on the news? Yeah. You, you have? Okay. 
this is still the spring yet. It's not quite summer, so they got it in right in time. They make these major things in the spring. This is when everything comes out. <laughs> now this law for them, or this new rule, or whatever they want to call it in the FCC, uh, will allow the larger networks to buy all of the television stations, right? This is the first time that this has happened, and Ted Koppel said this on TV, we've been seeing him for a long time, in over 50 years, maybe even closer to 100 years, that it hasn't, has even been allowed to buy like that. But there's a reason for that. Because once the larger networks buy it, then who, the, we already know they have control of the media. But it'll be done. You can forget about independent TV. And what you can truly forget about is the fact that you may not ever want your child to watch television again. Because the lies and what is going to be put on the television is going to truly control your mind. And they're only going to let you see what they want you to see. And it's just like when, when they had the war on television, they already desensitized our children to actually look at war on TV and think it was part of a video game. It, yeah, I, I, I was there. I saw when the President Bush, when he was first really into his thing, you know, and he said, and that's before the million Shiites came back and started doing their rituals. So they're over there killing them now, which is why everything's hush hush. But you know, you may never know about that. So I remember him saying, to the children, our president said, this is not a video game. They were talking to your children. War, real war, was on television, and they were debating whether it was good to have it on TV or not. But here's what we'll do. We'll put a disclaimer so the children will know that this is not a video game. So once the decision where they own all of the television stations comes out, uh, what we all knew about, that they control the media and control our minds will be more of a reality than what we can, than what we have imagined. But the sad part is, or the most important part is, is that even though we're adults and can deal with that, that aspect, what about the children? Think, what about the children? So, what do we do? We have to grab them. We have to. We have to start teaching our children properly. We must. Okay. Um, just so you know, it's not based on a crystal ball. It's based on average, uh, on natural law. I want to get started. I, I got something I, I, that I precisely wanted to say. It's about five minutes, and it was so precise that I didn't want to have to sit here because I would go off into other things. So I put it on tape. You have the tape, right? Let me just find the, um, does everyone here, let me, before I go, because some people, a lot of people here are advanced with uh, some of the astrology. And this is really designed for people who, it's, it's elementary, I think. I mean, I'm excited about it, but <laughs> I am. It, um, I've been doing this for a long time, and I'm still finding out something new every day. Okay, here we go. Does, any, does anybody here already know, like, how the sun moves, the progression? I mean, do we already, are we already there, basically there? No. What do you mean, progression? Okay. I heard the lights. Yeah, can you get the lights for me? The progression meaning how it travels, how it travels, how it goes through, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that it goes through uh, the signs, the seasons, how it gets there. All right, we'll just sit through this. Yes, this is in the book. Um, I don't have every page of the book yet, but I do have this in. Okay. What? Yeah, sure. Show me. Here you go. Okay. All right, we're just going to play this. It's about what? Is it five minutes? I want you to just kind of think about the movement of the sun. Oh, great. We have some children here. This is good. This is perfect. All right. You got the lights? 
fentanyl that were used during the time that they banned and or arrested our civilization and culture that but yet used not I won't even say to create this but used in their their religion I'm gonna pull them right off of there and I was just wondering if you could see one right now Think that's a flat red thing? Huh? You like that? All right, listen, I want you to listen to something about five minutes, okay? Okay. The sun right. rises on the ascendant area. In right the there. Eastern Hemisphere, right. Where it ushers See? in nature's new year at the spring or vernal equinox, bringing us equal day and equal night. It then moves into Taurus, where it is fixed right. or stable in the middle of the season. From there it moves into Gemini where it begins to mutate out of the spring season and turns to cancer in the north. Oh, yeah, right there. This is the summer solstice, where right the here. sun remains for three degrees and brings the longest day of the year, as it is at its highest point in the north and summer is initiated. The sun then moves into Leo, where it is fixed and dignified in the summer season. It then moves into Virgo, where it begins to mutate again out of the season. When the sun turns to Libra, it is on the descendant line in the west and is beginning its descent into the colder days. Here, the fall or autumn equinox takes place where once again we have equal day and equal night. It then moves into Scorpio where it is fixed in the season and on to Sagittarius where once again it mutates out of the fall season and continues its descent into the darker, colder days. When it moves into Capricorn, mm -hmm. it is at its lowest point in the south, bringing in the winter and the shortest day of the year. This is the winter solstice. And it's interesting to note that it takes place on December the 22nd. The sun remains there in that same degree for three days, after which on December 25th, it ascends like a new birth or resurrection and continues on its path. And then moves into Aquarius, where it is again fixed in the season. Then into Pisces, where it mutates out of the winter and begins its climb towards exaltation as it reaches the ascendant line and begins a new year, bringing in once again the spring equinox and a new cycle. As above, so below. It is important to note that the sun does not move around the earth. The earth moves around the sun. The aforementioned progression is true as the sun reflects upon the earth. There are many other elements in the cosmos that have an effect on the earth. When speaking of the zodiac, we have nine other planets, 12 houses, and 12 stellar lights called sun signs, which shine their hues and energies onto the earth plane. The zodiac is broken up into three major areas, houses, planets, and sun signs. The planets move through the 12 houses, giving off certain energy, the 12 signs move through the same houses and they channel the energy of the planets into certain traits or characteristics. The houses that the planets and signs are in determine which areas of life are affected by their influence. The most powerful influences are from seven planets, the seven ruling powers. The Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. The Sun gives you life and determines your character. The moon determines your emotional self. Mercury determines your mind or intellectual self. Venus, your love nature. Mars, your energy or action. Jupiter unfolds your gifts and Saturn disciplines you. Your individual self or body and personality is determined by your ascendant sign, the sign that is on the horizon at the time of birth, hence your beginning of travel through the zodiac. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are not left out. They are higher octaves of Mercury, Venus, and Mars, respectively. It seems they give you a second chance to fine-tune yourself before Jupiter bestows your gifts, unless Saturn will make you do it all again until you get it right. It is said that you will not get out of this universe until you have passed through the rings of Saturn. Saturn will not let you pass until you have disciplined yourself properly and know the laws of nature, as you must take them with you wherever you go. It has been written that the chosen few are 144,000. This will follow as truth when each one of us has come back and learned the lessons of each sun sign. 12 times 12 equals 144. So don't fret about your accomplishments or your disappointments. 
you will return until you make yourself whole, and you will return to receive your honors, awards, and achievements. All that is in the cosmos are a lesson in the laws of nature, and we must know them all. At this time, we are in the age of Aquarius. An age is determined when two moving planets meet on their path. They travel together and create a magnanimous, magnetic influence of their traits and attributes and the traits and attributes of the sun sign they are ushering in. Aquarius is being ushered in by Uranus and Saturn. Uranus who bows down and bends to no one is asking that we heighten our love nature to altruism, love in a broad spiritual sense for all. We let with Saturn is making a statement that if you do not, you will be severely disciplined. It is clear we had all buckled down in our instruction because the rays of Uranus and Saturn are dynamic. I see the sun and the moon as mother and father. The sun, father, sparking life, and the moon, mother, are giving birth perpetually. I see the planets as their children dancing and playing, going to and fro on a course that becomes their very own playground. The signs are the stellar lights that shine upon the planet's arrival as they both, planets and signs, travel in approved course set by their parents in and out of many mansions in the sky. The entire cosmos are intertwined and repetitiously demonstrate the laws of nature, rigidly planted in divine natural law and order. So we too are in active nature and are affected by the movements of the cosmos. These movements create 131,760 astrological types and 131,400 varieties of personalities a year. Which one are you? And what lesson are you here to learn this time? Thank you. <laughs> the music. Okay. Now, what I want to show you with that, I had to, I had to do that because that is the progression of ourselves, the seasons, uh, the sun, the way the sun goes, and the seasons that it goes in. I, I wanted to make a point of the fact that it starts at the cardinal sign, Aries, here. This is foundational, because with anything, you have to have the foundation to, to build with. It ends here. It starts with cardinal sign, which is Aries. Then it goes to a fixed sign, and then it goes to a mutable sign. What that means is the cardinal sign starts the season. It initiates the season. The, the fixed sign, which is Taurus in this case, for this season, this is one season right here, spring. The fixed sign is Taurus. It's fixed in the middle of the season. And then you have, it, it likes being there. It doesn't, either way, it, it, it's right in the middle. Then you have Gemini, who's ready to mutate out of a season into the next season. But Gemini's not the initiator of the season, Cancer is. <laughs> and this is like we are. Cardinal people get things started. Fixed people, those are the ones that you call stubborn and say, you know, they don't move <laughs> because they're fixed. Now, and just generally, same thing with Gemini people, mutable, they change to flexible because this is where they are. And you go around the entire, each season. And you'll notice something, and we're going to need this as we go through the other lessons. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Very important. Necessary forces, necessary actions. To initiate something, to be in it, and to be out of it. That's what a season, what is required in a season. Now, of course, if you're a person in your chart and you have a lot of signs, that you might not be in Aries. And this is how this whole chart thing works. That's why you must know your natal chart. You won't need a counselor, you won't need a psychologist, you won't need anything else if you just get to know you, really. So let's say that you are not in Aries, but you happen to have in your chart a lot of cardinal signs. So then that, that quality of what I just explained about cardinal will apply to you also. Because that's what happens in astrology. People say, well, well, you know, well, She's a Gemini, but she don't act like one. She acts like, she don't act like this. I don't believe in astro astrology is not right. It's because <laughs> it's not that simple. There are seven, actually 10 planets that affect you. Now, as I mentioned, um, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are higher active planets. 
So that means if there are higher octave planets, you've got the Sun, Moon, Mercury, uh, Venus, the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn. There's the seven. They move faster. They affect well, all of them affect the strong, but they're constantly moving. They're what's making the changes of people. The sun being the, your giver of life, your, your, that gives you life and your general characteristic, and the moon is your inside self that not very many people get to see, and then your ascended, that's the outside personality of you. That's what was on the horizon. That's what many people get to see. So there's a lot of variations, a lot of them, but if we can get to know the foundational so in other words even if I were to look at if you were to look at someone's chart and it had a bunch of signs in it you could at glance say well gee our Aries is cardinal he got, he's got a cardinal sign so generally he's gonna be or she's gonna be this way I mean this gets down to a science where you can actually tell you can know and it's like you might want to know who or how many t or whether you're gonna get married some people never get married and other people think, well, Dad, what's wrong with them? They never got married. Or, or a man might be thinking, well, how come I don't want to get married? You know, it's because possibly what's in your chart. There's some, there's some variations that make it so you can't decide which woman to marry. That's why you don't get married. And that's, perpetual. that's just the way it is. But once you know that, then you never have to question why. Then you can maybe use your own will and make it happen. Instead of wondering, you know, is there something wrong with me? Same thing with the woman. It's the same thing. Or there are some cases where your chart is and it's like doomed, you know. You, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's very doomed because things are kind of like not in good aspect, but it's meant to be. Whatever it is, whatever your chart is, it is meant to be that way. You are meant to be here to learn that lesson. If you've got a lot of pleasant things in your chart, you're here to reap it. If you've got a lot of challenging things in your chart, that's what it's meant to be for you to do so. That's right. <laughs> and the best way is to find out, you know, to me, I'm thinking, find out what it is, your blueprint is, which is your map, and then go do it and be it. Instead of running around trying to figure out what it is, it, you know, you know you don't feel, it doesn't feel correct. You know, I, I always say to people, when something hits your ears, something hits your ears, and it feels good in your heart, which is where your soul is, right? It's for you. It's for you, right? It's for you. And that, when that happens, not what someone else thinks it should be and you ought not. And that's how you know what you're supposed to be doing in your life. So it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of this is your culture. This is your map to finding and being yourself. Of course it knows who you are. <laughs> Again, it was there when you were born. The cosmos affected, gave you all the qualities that you have. And when you go back up there, even like any religion, they, what they, they, they're all going to heaven. Every last one, I'm going to heaven. Some of them got a rapture that's coming to get them and take them back to heaven and they're waiting and all that. And, but they don't have no idea where they're going. Neither are they concerned. In fact, don't talk about it. But they're coming back. So you just keep coming back until you learn the principles. You're going to have, like I said, you have to take them with you so that you can will your way back. When we talked about will. Will is, well, let's get, get through this. Will is to create. I want to show you, before I get the other one, somebody said they knew what this looked like. Does anybody know what this looks like? Oh, like the sun. Oh, that is, that, that is representing the, yes, the sun goes, that's right. It goes, like goes around, like a circle, a 360 degree circle. And the sun travels around, right? And actually the earth travels around the sun. Yeah, because yeah, the earth is spinning, and it's spinning, and going around, and it's spinning, and it's spinning, and it's spinning. Absolutely. It has, its, it has its own course, right? Mm -hmm. How about the moon? The moon is spinning around the earth. I don't know if it spins while it's spinning, but, but it, ha it goes around the earth and goes with the earth, too. Okay, the moon and the sun sort of travel together, and they have their own separate course, which is why sometimes you'll see people tell you that the sun and the moon are not planets, because the other planets actually travel around the sun, and the moon kind of hangs out with the sun. 
you know, has its own definite course. The moon's course, you're correct, son. The moon has its own course, which is why we have actually the moon has 13 cycles, and a, wo and a woman yeah. has 13 cycles. And there's a lot of moons, too. Yes, a lot of the planets have their own moons. But we're talking about the big major moon, right? That's the one we're talking about, the one that we see that comes every night faithfully. Right? And the sun that rises every morning faithfully, no matter what's going on, it's there. So that's what, but you're right, that's the, and that is the concept of, of, of the cosmos. All of the planets have their own, their own course. So I was saying that Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn are, are I'm sorry, you, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, their course is so out there, here's something here, that it's because they're large. It's not that they're so far away, it's just that they go so far out in their, in their course, but yet they do affect you. They do affect what we do here. We're going to talk some more about the, you're going to tell me some more about how to, I'm going to need you to help me out, okay? Thank you. Um, besides seeing the sun, yes, because we're talking about the progression of the sun here, and, and does anybody know what this is? these things. Does that look like anything to you? That's what they actually are. They are directions. But now, have anybody ever seen the swastika? Okay, you seeing it? Now, the swastika actually reverses it because you said direction and that is the direction. Sometimes you'll see it this way, it really doesn't matter because it's just, it goes around. And this is life. Going, the tags going the other way is death. Okay? So, as you can see, they're still taken from something that is about the progression of life and used it in a culture. You know, you would have never known that that's what it was. And it's amazing. I had read about that in a story called Rebecca that was in the I'm a Rockin' Star. I think part one and part two. It's an excellent movie, all, I mean, an excellent movie, excellent article. All just, you, you read it? Yeah, you did. I think part three has to come out, though. Yeah, exactly. You didn't finish it yet. No, right. And, um, yeah, and, and if you notice in there, it had swastika, had the amulets. See? They had the amulets that the people were wearing. All right, we'll go back. They're on the bottom of the page, and they had the amulets. And I noticed that it was, it was swastika. Yes. You saw it? Okay coming from, because that, that, of course, they were honoring this, the, 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 the natural law and the sun, right, in the zodiac, but someone else took it and made it, and reversed it and made it to represent their culture of death. So it all comes from. Now, as far as seeing the cross, you see the cross, right? I'm, I'm going to change it. You see the cross, and you see, well, you know what, I'm going to leave this one on here, because this one's smaller. You see the cross, and you see this, everywhere that a season changed, what did I say? They were cardinal points, right? Okay. Cardinal points. Fixed. It's in the middle, so it's fixed. Because if I was standing here, right, and I'm cardinal, and you were standing here in the middle, and then somebody else was on the other side, the guy in the middle would be fixed. He can't move. Right? So that's how you remember that. Fixed is right in the middle. And they like being there, too. That's why most people who are earth signs and or particularly Tauruses, they're tied to the, their earth signs and they're fixed. But, of course, Aquarius is fixed. And if you know, that's something else to notice. If you notice, hmm? Pisces is mutable. So Pisces is mutable, changes a lot. Now, I'll tell you who's mutable. Pisces is mutable. Virgo is mutable. <laughs> and Gemini is mutable. You're Pisces? You're mutable. Um, which means you can change very easily. That could be a good thing. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. But just remember, everything exists at the same time, positive and negative, good and bad. It's a matter of how you see it. It's all it is. Somebody say something bad happens, it may not be bad. There's a silver lining behind every cloud. Maybe if you s now. Huh? Like more trees, like a whole lot of trees growing in the city. And people think it's bad because they would block out the stone. Because then it blocks something out for them. I don't know why, but people don't like trees in there. What do you think about trees? I like trees. Absolutely. They feel great. 
most of them have fruit on it, and that's what you're supposed to eat, son, the fruit. In fact, there's an issue in here <laughs> about health, about eating meat. You know why? You're supposed to eat fruit and, 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 and vegetables that Mother Earth provides for you. You don't need to go to the store, to the grocery store, or, and hope that they're open. You don't need to worry about whether they're feeding you stuff that's going to kill you, because that's what's happening right now. It's bad food out there, very bad food. Uh, exactly. Right. Exactly. You just, the trees are there. Now, I'll give you something else, and maybe you can tell your friends this that eat meat when you get older or right now. A tiger is a meat-eating animal, right? His digestive, digestive tract is three times the length of his body. Mm -hmm. It's either three or six, because I studied this a long time ago. It's either three or six, and I make sure I'm right, because I know you're going to go check. You come back and let me know. It's three or six. Okay. Either way, the comparison is our bodies and our digestive tract is 12 times the length of our body. You wow. thought three was bad. What do you think about 12? It's a long time. Right. So what happens to the meat? It starts to rot and get bad. And that's where you... Absolutely. So a tiger has his three times because he's supposed to eat meat and he expels it out of his body. Okay. Huh? Yes. Yes. Right. We're, so what I'm saying is what, son, that we... We like acidic and rotten. And when we eat meat, when you eat meat, it just goes bad in your body. It's That's like what I'm trying to tell you. Exactly, son. And you know what? That's why people have colon cancer has been very popular lately in the past five years or ten years or whatever. Who knows? I don't know. Ever since Reagan got it, it's like everybody paid attention. That was one of the presidents. You know, but all other sicknesses as well. Meat. Well, that's why people aren't as healthy as they should be. Okay? okay. All right. We're moving along. Um, so <clears throat> we see the cardinal points. That's what we were talking about, right? Remember that. So the cardinal points are where the seasons change. Now you'll notice that that looks like a what? It looks like a. Um a cross. Okay, so I got to say this kind of gently since, since we have children here. Um, here's what is thought that this is astrology and people followed it without question. It is a representation of the laws of nature without question whether you want to accept that fact or not. In spite of you it is. So people would watch and be able to tell the time by where the sun was located in the sky. And they had sundials. And then people would have the ability to determine how to plant the vegetables in the ground based on where the moon was, the phases of the moon. And they actually, I believe it's Stonehenge, has built, that's what that is. The moon moves. And each slither, if you will, lets them know where it is. Or the sun moves, I'm sorry, the, for, for where they have the, I'm not sure if that stone hinge, I saw it on one of them, where they have, actually they couldn't figure out what it was for, but they have like big stones and they have openings. Okay, that's for when the sun is moving so they can tell, you know, where it is. But the moon, of course, you can look at it and pretty much see its phases, but at the same time it moves too. So these are the things that were happening. Now, I had a question. What? Is it true that the pyramids are, um, that each pyramid is pointing to a star? Yes. Uh, Tell you about that in a minute. Now, let's see, because we're talking about up, up here, up, up in the cosmos, which is part of this universe as well as the Earth. So, now, um, hmm, I lost my train of thought, sorry, wait a minute. Oh, okay, so what I was saying is, so, now, this is what people used to go by and live by. Now, when in the, right after the Crusades, or if you look at the encyclopedia, they'll use the 1500s, they, they, that's the time frame they'll use, um, they began Christianity in its, in its present form. And when they did that, they took and they made a cross. And they took that right from here. Now, the Catholics to this day, what do they call themselves in church? Cardinals. 
The Catholics call themselves cardinals. And they do this. So what they're doing is giving respect or homage to the cycle of the sun. But you don't know that. <laughs> That's right. They do do that. Yes, sir. They're doing this. They're doing that. That's what they're doing. Yes, sir. To the cycle of the sun. That's what they're acknowledging when they do that. So I'm kind of trying to get you to see, or we're, we're trying to get to, right, that's what they're doing. We're trying to get to where this always was and is and will be, despite of whether you want it to be or not. And they took and said, here, we want you to have this religion. And so, of course, they took some of the tenets from, and this is not a religion. That's number one. It's a way of life. It's the way it is. It's the natural universal law and used it to create, or not to create, I hate to say that, because it has nothing to do with their creation. Yeah, right, to manifest their own, or you know, used it in their manifestation of whatever they thought they were doing, which, yeah, which is not a culture here. Because to me, a culture means to cultivate, nourish, flourish, you know, nurture, and it, look at the crop we got today, and I'm not just, ta I'm talking about what's happening, this is, this is I wouldn't call this culture. So we got to get back to this. Do we see that? It takes the middleman out, and it's very simple. They used it. You know, everybody used it but us. <laughs> everybody used it but us. I'll give you another one. I'll give you one more. Now, I don't have the ticks on here, but the little dots, which are degrees that represent. As you can see, this is a season, and this is a season. I think I might change this so we can see a little better, because we're going to go to the next. Oh, here's what I wanted to show you. Also, the Coptic cross. You've all seen the Coptic cross, right? Yeah. There it is. Comes right off of the zodiac. All right, and uh, we talked about this already, the cardinal points. I put it in red so you could see them and you could see the cross. Yes, son? Uh, what, is, what, is the red part? what is the red part in the center? Where? I mean, what is the red part? That I just did? Mm -hmm. In there. What is oh, the, you know what? Symbolized? Nothing but a, but a 360 degree circle and I like colors so I just put it there. But it looks like, we, it, it, as long as it's a circle, huh? That looks like the sun, very good. And it is, that's what it is because everything is going around it. So I put it there to be the center. But I didn't put it there to call it the sun. I just like dots and like this, this one that I'm gonna put on. But I'm gonna call it the sun from now on because it's very good. It's smaller, but we're talking about the sign, so the sun can be small for this explanation. See, this one I made black because I made the lines red, so I wanted it to show up, okay? So, that's the sun, and this is how the Earth travels around it because the sun does not really travel around the Earth, but the reflections make look that way, and the zodiac sign, so, so what you've got, <laughs> And you've got the zodiac signs moving, you've got the, the planets moving, and we're gonna go into the houses that basically we're gonna call stationary, because they don't move. Well, everything moves, we but yeah, the, the planets and the, and, and the signs are moving into the houses, because everything has motion. So now I've showed you the cardinal points, which we did earlier, and I wanted to show you the Coptic cross, which you see now, and also in between every sign, season is 30 days, correct? Yes. Now, you know what? I didn't let this dry, but, oops. I didn't let this dry, so I have to run it again. So those little smudges, smudges are from the, that's what got all over me. I was trying to figure it out. Okay, so now, here's your, here's your signs. Now, in between, this is again, here's our season. Spring, summer, fall, where the sun falls, or autumn, and then winter, and then back again. And each, within each season are three months. And within, within each month are 30 degrees, which are liking to days when you're in astrology. And then these are broken up, which we're gonna get into, into three areas. Which is why I wanted to tell you that although you may be in Aries and you are ruled by Mars, you may not be ruled by Mars because three planets, it's called the changing of the guards, come in and rule that. But before I get there, in, in between 
not only just the, the months, but the whole thing. Let's see, where are where, where, where? Leo. Now let's start here. Let's start with Aries. It's just easier that way. You have Aries. If you count, if you're looking at the front of the cover of the book, I put this on there. If you count every other sign from your sign. Okay, I'm doing my friend, Pisces. Here you are, that's you. If you count every other sign from your sign, that means skip this one, but go here. Skip Gemini and go to Cancer. Cancer and go to Virgo, Virgo to Scorpio, Scorpio to Capricorn, back to Pisces again. You'll find that those are one, they're, com they're all water signs or they are all earth signs because water and earth is complementary. And, right. And the same, no, let's try the fire sign. Here's a fire sign, Aries. Every other one is a Gemini. It's going to be fire or air. That's it, okay? We go from, from Aries to Gemini to Leo to Libra to Sagittarius to Aquarius back to Aries. Fire and air, complementary. Now, what these are called, every other sign from your sign are called deacons. Spelled D-E-C-A-N-T-S. But what do you have in a church? Deacons. And how many do you have? Do you see? Oh, hey. No. Should be, should, got it now? Got it now? Cardinals and deacons, right off of here. Now, you heard on the tape me talk about, and I said, interesting to note that when the sun gets into Capricorn, which is the winter solstice, which starts on December 22nd, it stays there for three degrees, and then it rises out like resurrecting out of a grave on December 25th. Okay. That is what actually happens. And you know what? What I'm telling you is not something that I went and figured out. It's written in other people's books also that actually have studied astrology and have put books out that are spiritually motivated. motivated. You know, you don't want to get the commercial ones. I've read them too, you know, commercialized ones. You know, but it, you know, it's all there. But so, you can go and find this. In fact, uh, two books I have right now have it in. A, a to Z Delineator and Message from the Stars by, by Max Hendel. It's there. And when you read it and when you see it, you're like, wow, why didn't I know that all the time? I could have figured this, this thing I got going on about something's wrong with this God concept a long time ago. Because it would have went, you know, like, how did it, men used to say things that make you go, uh? You know, or I could have had a V8 or whatever they say. So that is, that's an amazing thing. Now, in reality, that happens in cancer too, because this is your, your um, spring equinox and that's your uh, winter equinox. I took that, that one down, but, but uh, that's on December the 22nd. Now, this year, for the first time in my entire life, I experienced the stillness of the sun and it was amazing. You ever go out and it's just a beautiful night or a beautiful day or a beautiful morning or a beautiful sunrise? I was out and uh, I was running. It was, I guess it was, it was December the 23rd or the 24th. It was in those three days. Even though days in astrology are different, it's degrees, but it ends up being, equating back out to days to us. It stays there. Uh, it stayed there for those three days from the 22nd to 25th. So I was out and it, did, it hadn't dawned on me. I missed it. You know, I, was, I, I had missed it. I missed that, that what, what was going on. But I was with some friends or I was going to that. We, I was leaving. And, and there was a few people that were standing there. We were outside and it was like, okay, see ya. And then one of them said, wow, it really is a, something about the night. Strange or nice. And then it hit me. I said, oh, this is the winter solstice. Everything stops and kind of you can feel and even though everything is not really stopping but the uh, Motions on the earth and between the cosmos and makes it appear that it is and I said oh this is what it is And that's what we were feeling. It is a really interesting. I mean, it's real It's like, you know saying it and showing it here is one thing but experiencing it and December it, Well between the 22nd 23rd 24th and then on the 25th, it goes and it starts moving again. This happens every year. Yeah, I'm sure 
but we, you're going to feel it. It's something you got to feel. Something you got to feel right. Yeah, because you never pay attention. It happens in spite of us. We just don't pay attention. We're not in tune to it. So it's, it's, it's a really nice feeling. But just to think that, you know, that was used for the Christ story, rising in three days, even though that was back in Easter. At those points in the season, would that be an ideal time to, 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 uh, uh, to start something or to stop something? Or Absolutely. Something? Absolutely. Absolutely. You right into it with my, my, Mother Nature. Listen, one thing you can know is <clears throat> they say New Year's January 1, right? But let's think about it for a minute. When is the Nature's New Year? March. In the spring. spring. When everything else grows in, uh, up. Well, why are we sitting here? To, you know, I mean, right? In the dead of winter, you know? Does, it, does that make any sense? To have the new year on January 1 when Mother Nature is bringing, bringing forth everything in, a, in, in the spring? Yeah, I would think. But in so, any, yes, your answer to initiating at the beginning of seasons, yes. I was going to say, I, I would think that it, it might be um, the beginning, it would be December 22nd. Because, as they say, like, I believe some of the Hebrews, um, they were saying how day starts with night. Like how things start to become, like basically the void is the beginning of all things, and things come out of the night. Yeah. Yeah, and the night then comes the new day. And, and in a sense, you could say that the winter solstice is the night. Actually, it is going into, as far as the sun goes, the progression of the sun, it is clearly going into the darker, colder days. No, no question about that because it's on the side where, it, like, like here in Cancer, it is, at its, it is at its highest point in the summer, mm -hmm. right? That's why Leo is where it, it rules Leo. Right. But that's the summer because it's in the middle of the summer. Yeah. It's it dignified. Yeah, but like, but the sun rules Leo. Okay. Even though it rises here, this has nothing, you know, it rises on, on this, uh, on the ascendant and represents your sun sign, whatever happens to be there. But it too rules one of the signs and it happens to rule Leo. Why? Because it's the highest point in the heaven, right? Yes. And so it, it, it's going to be dignified when it's in the middle, not the beginning. It's just starting, it's initiating, right? And then by the time you get to Virgo, it's getting ready to mutate out. So it's got to be, it's dignified right here. Okay. Got it? But yeah, like that, I mean, that's basically, um, if you ever read the, the crucifixion story that's in, in, in the Biblio, the Helio text. Yes. That's why he was trying to um, hurry up and crucify him before nightfall because it's, that would be the Sabbath. Yes. And in the beginning of the Sabbath is the beginning with all their days when nighttime hits. And, um, but, like, I mean, that's just, it depends on how you're looking at it. Well, was the Sabbath considered a Saturday to that? Do yeah. you know? Okay, but see, the beginning of your Friday, week. They call it Good Friday. <laughs> but it was, it was, In preparation for. But, but the thing is, Sabbath hit as soon as the sun go down. That's the beginning of the Right, day. and Jews, Jews have that philosophy, too. You know, yeah, they have their home. Hebrews, yeah, yeah Hebrew, Hebrews, sorry, Hebrews. Uh, today's Hebrews have that. Yes, before the sun goes down. Yes. And, and, then they get, and I believe that they, they, their history is coming out of a greater um, understanding. Um, this book called Stolen Legacy um, talks about... Uh, like Stolen about, Legacy? Like, yeah, 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 how about that? System, yeah. Well, they kind of, but... but in one, basically, a science that was like kind of understood by the, um, the ancient scientists, I guess. Right. Who would document the way time, the way things flow, the right. order of things. Right, right, I understood. But another thing in reference to the modern day Jews of today, um, they, is it Saturday or is it Friday? Friday. They, Friday. Friday night. Six o'clock. Friday night. Friday night. Friday night. As soon as the sun, sun goes, sun goes down, down. Time is, is, is based on, uh, basically time, my understanding, is based on the um, elapsation between events. I just know it's Friday evening. It's not yet dark, but it's on its way. Yeah, they're in the middle. In the middle right? They don't know, on just this one point. They don't know, is it going to go this way, or is it going to go that way? Who's going to end up winning in the end? They said they're kind of on the middle of the fence there. Because like the Muslims, like the, you mentioned Shiites earlier. 
I mentioned that only to, yeah. And a reference user. So I'm going to use the reference, reference again because the Shaykhs and the Sunnis, like, when they make their prayers, they make their prayers according to the rotation of the zodiac. Okay. Of the zodiac. Uh, yeah. The signs there. So they have one, what you're speaking of, when the sun is descending, they call it, the Muslims, they call it in their Arabic language, they say the uh, Maghrib. Okay. Setting. Right. So, and that, this is, it's not dark, but it's like, it's like quite dusty before the darkness comes totally in. Right. Now, let me tell you something, because you're talking about rituals and... Yeah, they're rituals, right? Rituals. Now, I'm just, this is my opinion about right. that. Once you know this and understand the movements of nature, yes. you don't need a ritual because you become that. Just in your acknowledgement of it and knowing that it exists, you are it. You become it. You live it in your daily lives. You represent it in everything that you do. You follow me now? I'm not saying that anybody who's doing a ritual shouldn't do it. I, I didn't say that. Right. I, no, I was just using it for a reference point. Yes, I understand. Right. But I wanted to, yeah. you talked about the prayer that's done five times a day or whatever that they have. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to like make that point out. But the Christians, the cardinals and uh, the deacons, how they did that. So I says, okay, then you got to that, I says, okay. Now, now, and now you see how they do their they thing. Do their Everybody's doing their thing right. off of this thing that, it's not thing, laws of nature that is there in spite of whatever anybody's doing. That's true. It's, it, it, so why you cut the middleman out? You know, you, it's, the guy concept is gone, and this is why this was banned. And, you know, uh, from the, like I said, the men, the theologians, which are just men of theory, and it was banned and, and actually to kill, to kill the civilization and the culture. This is why, because now you're not going to believe in God anymore and, and from, their, <laughs> from their perspective. It's more wicked than what it appears. That's interesting, because in the Quran, because I read it, in some place I, I was sitting, the Bible in the Quran, so I was just going through those. I was going through the Bible in the Quran, and um, I noticed in the Quran, I was heard this in the Bible also, but the, the zodiac speaks about the zodiac. But I know it's in the Quran. Okay. In a, in a, in it's in the Bible too. It's in the Bible. But it's in the Circle Seven. Circle Seven. It's everywhere actually, but people don't recognize it. But go ahead. What what is in the Quran? It's about the zodiac. What you're speaking what, of. It speaks. What is it? What does it say? Though? I mean, what what, uh, what position is it? Because see, in the Helios Bibliotech. I'm paying attention to the signs of the the zodiac. Okay. Okay, good. It's council. It's how do you say it? Uh -huh. Consolation or something like that. Okay. And so I, do they do it? No. No. No, they don't. Okay. No, but it says it. But it says that. Okay. <laughs>